Ryan, a great congressman from Illinois, passed away about two years ago, maybe three. Uh, but his great uh, avocation was visiting Ireland every year. And he would roam amongst the cemeteries writing down interesting epitaphs. And the last one he brought back, I'll never forget, and I'm happy to share with you. Here lies Brigadier General Brian Monroney, shot by his servant August 27th, 1898. And some scroll work and some angels flying around. And then on the very bottom, well done, thou good and faithful servant. <laughs> When I, uh, I wasn't sure I should raise my hand on the adoptive parent situation because I had a brother that was adopted, and you didn't mention, uh, you know, uh, uh, kindred like that, so I wasn't sure. So Jean told me, yeah, go ahead, put your hand up. So, but my brother John, uh, who passed away some years ago, was a delight and a wonderful person, and uh, we miss him very much, and so uh, I have that uh, association with adoption. Sam Levinson, the great comedian of some years back, once said something. Uh, he said, every child arrives in this world with a tiny message clutched in his tiny little hand. He said, it contains some secret of the universe, some answer to the riddle of why we're here. Uh, he only has a short time to deliver this message, and he only has one chance, and so do we, and that every little new life should be treated as top secret. I think that is a, uh, uh, something we ought to think about because every precious little human life that is created is something beyond measure, beyond price. And you know, the traditional American view uh, of the importance of life is contained in the birth certificates of our country, the Declaration of Independence. It says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are endowed by their creator with inalienable rights, among which is life, the first right. And it's from the creator, not from the Supreme Court, not from Congress, not from the executive mansion, but from the creator. And so our human dignity, our human rights, the thing that distinguishes us from animal, vegetable, and mineral is something given to us by the creator. I think the Republican Party realizes that if you can politicize such a fundamental belief more than the Democratic Party, and I don't mean Democrats, there are many great, wonderful, glorious Democrats, and there are some Republicans I wouldn't care to spend my life on a desert island with. But, <laughs> but as a party, as a party, as a body of belief, as embraced and as expressed in our platform, which is an important document because it's a repository of what we believe in as a, as a party, I think you'll find respect for the Supreme Being, an acknowledgement of the need for prayer, and certainly an acknowledgement of the preciousness of all human life. Life does not belong only to the privileged, the planned, and the perfect. And I think that realization and the fact that adoption, adoption should be made available to everybody, and government should facilitate adoption. standard jokes about pro-lifers is they only care about human life up until the moment of birth and then they lose interest. And then little baby boy Doe was born in Bloomington, Indiana, Down syndrome, and the parents found that too great a burden to carry and they, they did not want that child. But the child was born, so the doctors gave the parents the management option of not feeding the child. There was a little, there was a little gap between the esophagus and the stomach, uh, which commonly happens, I'm told, in uh, Down syndrome children, and it's easily surgically corrected, but the parental consent is necessary to do that. Notice no parental consent is necessary to have an abortion to exterminate a young child, but you need a parental consent to perform that little linkage of the esophagus with the stomach. Without it, no nourishment could be absorbed and the little child starved to death. The doctors gave that option to the parents. There were six families wanted to adopt that little boy. They depersonalized that little boy by not naming him. And those parents that wanted to adopt the little child were rejected. I suppose it was too great a reproach to the natural parents to have that happen. The surgery was not performed, and that little child starved to death. Fighting for the life of that little child was the pro-life movement, not the ACLU, not the ACLU, not the people who constantly marched to the drum of civil liberties and human rights. They were nowhere to be found but the 
pro-life movement fought and fought and fought, futilely unsuccessfully, but nonetheless fought for that little, tiny, innocently inconvenient child. But in any event, uh, I think the cause of human life, recognizing from whence our human rights come, the sacredness of them, and the family as the basic unit of society, and the assault the family is under in our society today, uh, makes one have to be active.